Hello everybody, thank you for joining me for another review. This time we are reviewing The Heart is a Lonely Hunter 1968, saw it in 2017, gave this movie a rating of 8. Brace yourself because The Heart is a Lovely Hunter is truly a depressing movie and is as southern gothic as it gets. There are 7 subplots going on at once. Discrimination against blacks, mixed troubled adolescence, and her inability to connect with others, singer's inability to take care of his friend, the troubles of a drunkard, Dr. Copeland's relationship with his daughter, how people react to singer's deafness, labeling him as a dummy. The book was written in 1940 by Carson McCullers, her first, and she became famous as a result. She also wrote Reflections in a Golden Eye, which was published in 1941. That would later be made into a movie starring Elizabeth Taylor and Marlon Brando, and was directed by John Huston. With four novels to her credit, Carson McCullers died in 1967, having not seen the film version of either. Alan Arkin received a much-deserved Oscar nomination for his performance. He didn't speak one word throughout the film, which is impressive. The ending, which shows him dealing with the news of his friend, is powerful but shocking. As for him portraying a deaf mute, I have to say that he got the part right, yet wasn't authentic enough to pass for one. On the other hand, it was hard for me to evaluate his ASL. The signs were sometimes too fast and partly sideways. At first, I thought the signs were made up, but I realized that some of them were antiquated, which means people don't sign these words anymore now. There are modern signs for certain words. That's why I had a hard time translating a few of them. So I was figuring them out by thinking about the closely related signs. When Alan Arkin was fingerspelling, it seemed to be too quick and a bit messy. I just couldn't make it out. Look, my criticism for the film purpose is for the film purpose. My criticism is for the film purpose because it doesn't really matter. He played a real person, he communicated normally, just as Brando would mumble, yet his character was real all the same. As far as speech reading goes for Arkin's character, I honestly have to say it's not really possible. The most he would have grasped is up to 30%. Many of the characters didn't speak to him face to face, and their lips were too close together. Some of them were speaking too fast to be understood. Arkin was acting like a hearing person when he listened to them. What's shocking about his character, which the deaf world may not appreciate, is that Singer is a deaf mute along with his friend and prefers to make it in the hearing world. He doesn't seem to have any other deaf friends to communicate itself with. Sandra Locke is just great, earning herself an Oscar nomination for her debut performance. I've always thought of her as a talented actress, but Curtis... Critics trashed her performances when she was cast in Clint Eastwood's movies, which is completely unfair. As for the character in The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, I'm surprised that she didn't bother asking Singer to teach her ASL. She's a perfect candidate given the level of her energy. Also making a debut performance as the drunk guard is Stacy Keach, Cecily Tyson, Percy Rodriguez, Jackie Marlowe, and... Chuck McCann, who was dressed in clothes, which were worn by Sydney Greenstreet, also star. They were all outstanding. All in all, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter is a sad movie, but with great performances, especially with Alan Arkin. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, guys. We'll see you next time for another review. Bye-bye.